No, so well, they are so great. They're anything but straight. Please let them procreate. Let's get Eurified. Well, that was something. So, as promised, here's the first installment of my Yuri Ships Analysis videos. And today, it is none other than one of my favorite ships of all time, Nozomi and Ellie from Rubber Ibu. And if you're confused at what I'm talking about, these are a series of videos where I do a breakdown or analysis or whatever the hell you want to call it of some of my favorite Yuri ships. Now firstly, I'm just going to briefly explain how I'm going to structure these things so we know how these videos will proceed. If you've seen my Yuri shipping video, you'll know all about the shipping materials and how I break down a ship. Therefore, I'll start off with an intro into the ship, the character's relationship, their interactions and highlights, which of them would be a top and bottom, which will mainly be a subjective analysis obviously, and then finish off with a conclusion. I decided to incorporate the character's chemistry into the relationship, interactions, and highlights in top and bottom segments, as it will probably be more apropos to what I'm talking about in these sections. I also won't be talking about their fan fictions, unfortunately, and that's mainly due to legal concerns. I wouldn't want to get into an oopsie after all, but what I will talk about are the official content, or at least the ones that I'm aware of. As I mentioned in my last video, I've not seen, read, or heard every little bit of content related to a ship. So what you see in this video is all from my current knowledge. Speaking of that, I guess I should point out what the official content I'll be covering in this video are. Obviously, I'll be diving deep into the Love Live anime itself and scoop out any relevant details. Sadly, I will not talk about the School Idol Diary manga or the School Idol Festival game, as my knowledge on those are quite scarce. And I would like to keep this video focused mainly on the anime. However, However, I will make an exception and talk about Nozomi and Ellie's lovely duet, considering how much firepower that song holds. Oh yes. Firstly, before we talk about Nozo Ellie, there's something we need to get out of the way right up front, which is no, Nozomi and Ellie are not a canon couple. <laughs> Yes, I know, that's not what you want to hear right off the bat. But as unfortunate as that is, it is technically true. Love Live, in their signature ambiguous fashion, has skirted around the idea that their characters could be romantically attracted to each other. I've often said that they know exactly how and where to draw the line between romantic subtext and truly explicit, undeniable Yuri. It would make sense since the person who made the series is Yuri legend Sakurako Kamino, the creator of Strawberry Panic. Although I'm not not sure how much input she has on the anime. Maybe she's just a consultant or something. In either case, the writers seem to be fully aware of the romantic implications expressed by their characters, and likewise, they are also aware of the audiences these implications can attract. All these implications are of course open to interpretation, which appears to be where the Love Life team likes to sit. Basically, they provide us with a decent number of ship teases and romantic subtext, but will not go the whole hog. So as much as it pains me to admit, this is why we have yet to receive a definitive canon Yuri relationship in Love Live. Oh, we'll get to that. But all things considered, don't let this deter you from enjoying all the lovely shipping moments between your favorite Love Live characters. Anyway, that's enough rambling about that. Let's get to the whole reason you're here in the first place. That sweet, sweet Nozoelli. So where do I begin with these two? Well, for starters, the pair is widely considered to be the most popular ship in the Love Live franchise, rivaled only by Nikomaki. By the way, Nikomaki video coming soon. Even outside their franchise, Nozoeli has made quite the splash in the Yuri world, mainly thanks to fanfiction artists. Damn you, waterfall! And quite honestly, it's not difficult to see why they're so popular. In the anime, they're almost always seen together. They have a naturally close friendship, and they seem to trust each other more than anyone else. I think as as time went on, the writers started to see how much of a colossal force these two were, and whether or not the romantic vibes between them were intentional, their connection and character dynamic certainly makes it easy for you to see them in a romantic light. And with that said, let's talk about how these two connect with each other. Relationship. Now in the anime, Nozomi and Ellie first met each other in their freshman year at Otonokizaka High School, or as I like to call it, the Garden of Adolescent Yuri. 
or gay for short. So after Nozomi and Ellie became gay students, their lives would forever be changed after a captivated Nozomi reached out and offered to become friends with the cold and distant Ellie Chica. Well, there's a little more to it than that, so let's go back in time for a bit. In Season 2, Episode 8, we learned a little about Nozomi's past and how she had to transfer schools frequently because of her parents' work. And since her entire childhood was basically a big butterfly migration, she never had the opportunity to make any connections, and more importantly, friends. Once she settled in at Otonohizaka, she continued to feel closed off from people, completely certain that her friendship status would remain unchanged. Just then, a brilliant flash of gold entered into her sight. Nozomi then became mesmerized by the sexy beast known as ISA Ellie, and at that very moment, she knew that she was gay. And at that very moment, she knew that she found someone who was similar to her. A person who distanced herself from other people, but yearned to break out of her shell of isolation and obligations. Now, I'm definitely making it sound more romantic than it actually was, but it did strike me as peculiar that Nozomi was instantly drawn to Ellie. She eventually understood that Ellie was a bit of a lone wolf, and was so tied to her responsibilities that she ended up pushing people away. Nozomi could definitely relate to the whole being alone thing, so she finally mustered up the courage to make her first friend. Their relationship progressed pretty quickly too. Eventually they became student council president and vice president. My guess is that Nozomi wanted to be at Ellie's side every step of the way and to help her be honest with herself. And of course Nozomi succeeded by encouraging Ellie to join Muse. There she could finally be herself and not shoulder such a heavy burden. These two are at that level of a friendship where they trust each other exponentially and seem to know pretty much everything about each other. It's that kind of relationship where you know exactly what the other's thinking without them having to utter a single word. Basically, they're just one step away from being a married couple, which is fitting because they feel like the mommy and daddy of Muse, except that their kids are also gay with each other. So yeah, an incredibly healthy relationship all around. No need to go to couples therapy, they got it all figured out. So let's talk about all their special moments together, interactions and highlights. I guess I pretty much covered how they met each other, so let's discuss some of their other interactions and see what we can take away from them. So throughout most of Season 1, we can see that Nozomi was hard at work helping Ellie be more honest with her feelings. Using her spiritual power, she found the opportunity to do that with Muse. We learned that Ellie was very much against Muse's methods for saving the school, but at every opportunity, Nozomi pushed for Ellie to accept Muse and and all their glorious, glorified glory. In episode 8, after agreeing to help teach them how to dance, Ellie was able to see just how committed Muse were in saving the school. She couldn't admit to herself that they were such a powerhouse that could get stuff done and have fun at the same time. She also couldn't admit that she secretly wanted to join these goddesses. After storming off from a training session, we get a touching, though slightly melodramatic scene between Nozomi and Ellie. Nozomi tries to encourage Ellie to be more honest in what she wants in life, instead of being completely absorbed in her entrusted responsibilities, i.e. saving the school, and the laborious self-reliant approach that she had in order to save said school. After showing so much opposition and animus towards Muse, as well as harboring past disappointments in being a ballet dancer, Ellie could not summon the courage to grant herself that satisfaction. Nozomi realized that Ellie wanted to get back into the performing game again, but needed more convincing. She then sealed the deal by getting all of Muse together to give Ellie a supportive pep talk, and the opportunity opportunity to be an idol of Muse. Ellie's golden armor finally cracked, and it was largely thanks to Nozomi's relentless concern for our dearest friend. Yep. Just gals being very close pals. The festivities don't end there, of course, as Ellie was able to return the favor in Season 2. In Episode 8, the gang discuss what they should do for the next round of Love Live. Nozomi then suggests that they should go for a love song written by the entire group, an idea that Ellie greatly supports. Throughout the episode, Ellie becomes strangely determined in writing that love song, despite everyone's concerns. After a clever little Maki-chan corners Ellie and Nozomi and demands to know why they're so fixated on making a love song, we are then treated to Nozomi's backstory. Because Nozomi never had the pleasure of having so many caring friends throughout her life, she considered the very existence of Muse to be as sacred as the heavens. 
Which they are. A little wish that she had was for the entire group to write a song together to solidify their connection as team members and close friends. Of course, we learned that it didn't have to be a love song, just as long as it was a team effort song. Being the wise and mature one of the group, Nozomi couldn't publicly state this to the rest of Muse, thinking it'd be too embarrassing. And this is where Ellie came in. She wanted to make Nozomi's wish come true, even if it didn't seem like a big deal to Nozomi herself. So after the gang finally agreed to make a song together, we are then treated to a rare sight an embarrassed Nozomi and of course <laughs> So let's shift gears a bit and talk a little about Nozomi and Ellie's infamous duet, Karasu no Hana Zono, which loosely translates to, I want to have hot lesbian sex with you. Or at least that's what someone on Reddit told me it means. Now for those who aren't familiar with it, let me just say without hyperbole that this is one of the gayest songs I've ever heard. And we all know that the G word also means good. So this is the goodest song I've ever heard. Why is it so good, you ask? Well, for one thing, it's so blatantly about these two characters having romantic feelings for each other. Unless you think that it's actually about them being very, very close friends. In which case, I have a plot of land on the moon I would like to sell you. But seriously though, I'm actually quite surprised that they would make a song this explicit when the Love Live team have shown to be quite coy with their romance thus far. If you check out the lyrics, it quite clearly illustrates the two being in love with each other but are unable to express these feelings for whatever reason. I mean, my goodness, with lyrics like Maze of Lilies, Gazing at Each Other Softly, Our Secret Romance, Stay With Me Forever, I Love the Voice You Make When I F*** You, how could I not get a bundle of gay energy from it? Honestly, this song perfectly encapsulates Nozomi and Ellie, and it certainly provides some major fuel for this ship. So yeah, give it a listen if you haven't already. Now we come to the part where I creepily talk about which of these two characters would take the lead in bed. Top and bottom. So once again, this section will be a completely subjective analysis. There is no right or wrong answer, just a whole lot of speculation. That being said, I'll definitely try to be as logical and precise as I can. Or at least in the way that anyone can be logical and precise when talking about this subject. Just to explain, this is where I go through my reasoning process with Nozomi and Ellie, and which role they would likely belong to in regard to top and and bottoms. I look into their personality, their mannerism, and how they interact with each other in order to determine the roles. And yes, this will only be based on their anime iterations, nothing else. Also, I should point out that I'm well aware how characters are perceived in casual social situations may not necessarily reflect on how they would act in the bedroom, but that is all we have to work with here, so bear with me. And with that said, let the gossip begin. Now let me just start by saying that both Nozomi and Ellie exude top energy. They check all the typical boxes of a top player. They're confident, they're mature, they're talented, they're wise, and god damn they're gorgeous. But that does not mean they're invulnerable. When it comes to Nozoeli, a major element to their relationship is how much they rely on each other, and how important the other person was in helping them overcome their struggles. I bring this up because while Nozomi and Ellie are near perfect goddesses, they still do have their weaknesses and insecurities. And in my opinion, I think one way a top slash semi character can achieve their position is by being the one to shoulder their lover's burdens and to be a pillar of emotional support for them. It shows that they can take more responsibility and be someone who can take the initiative in an intimate sense. And uh, I don't know, there's something very chivalrous and charming about that. And dare I say, quite handsome too. Because Nozomi and Ellie have both taken the initiative in helping their sweetheart, they're both quite even in this regard. Although if I had to pick which of these two were more handsome, that would easily be Ellie. I mean, damn. She makes most guys look like little pansies. However, I should point out that Nozomi has one big advantage on her side, and that is her playful personality. She loves teasing people. And this is a common trait for a top, someone who playfully exploits your embarrassing side and teases you into submission, like my yoga instructor. We see Nozomi use this tactical advantage on Ellie on several occasions, and it worked every time. However, no human being, no matter how dominant they are, is immune to embarrassment. We finally get to see Nozomi flustered and be all sweet and innocent in season 2. And the cherry on top was seeing Ellie lovingly embrace.
embrace this side of Nozomi. Say in my head, Canon, I kind of figured that while Nozomi is a master in the art of teasing people, she would become extremely docile if she were to be teased herself. A classic case of role reversal. Which brings me to my verdict. I think it's pretty safe to say that Nozomi and Ellie have a very mutually beneficial relationship. They make up for each other's weaknesses, and neither one of these characters seem to consistently pull the other along or take full control in their relationship, like Honoka does with Katori and Umi, for example. Therefore, I believe it is pertinent to assume that Nozomi and Ellie have a role-switching relationship. Either one could take the reins and be overpowered by the other. It's just that sort of dynamic that they have, at least in my opinion, of course. So there we have it, an in-depth look into Love Live's most prominent powerhouse couple. Again, apologies that I wasn't able to discuss much of these two outside the anime. I definitely am sorry that I couldn't talk about how they went on a romantic date together in the school idol game and manga, and how they played Romeo and Juliet for a school play, which ended with Ellie kissing Nozomi on the forehead. I'm also very sorry that I couldn't talk about how Nozomi almost confesses her love to Ellie in the radio drama recording Wish Upon the God and how blatantly romantic it was. Again, I'm very sorry that I couldn't talk about any of these things, but unfortunately, they just aren't important enough. Ah, but seriously though, I personally want to keep these videos limited to only the anime, just to keep things simple. I might make some exceptions along the way though. By the way, all my future videos will be announced on my Twitter account well before I upload them on YouTube. So follow me there if you're interested in things like who my next Yuri ship video will be on. Oh, and for those who follow my Yuri artwork, don't worry, I'll definitely be coming out with some Nozo Ellie fan art soon. I've just been so swamped with the Nijikazaki girls. Hmm, yeah, I really made too many fan art of them. Yeah. Ooh. Links in the description. So anyway, I really can't give enough praise to Nozomi and Ellie. They hold a special place in my heart, and they will forever be one of my favorite ships. I am definitely certain that I'll bring them up again in a future video. But until then, let us all hold out hope that one day these two will join in holy matrimony and- Oh my god! They're Already married? Jeez, that didn't take long. Well, I guess there's just one thing left for them to do after getting married. Yep, one very important business to attend to now that they're lovers. <laughs> oh, yes, a truly intimate and special something that you can only experience with a love of your life. And that is. Going to their accountant and asking them how to file their marriage taxes together. <laughs> dun -dun 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 -dun.